Well, most of us have heard that China's boom could go bust, but is the bigger threat from China the possibility that it's turning into 1930 Nazi Germany, a corporativist state controlled by a fascistic single-party dictatorship? That's what one of our guests fears. He is China resident and economist Robert Bloom. Also joining us is Gordon Chang. He is author of The Coming Collapse of China. Gentlemen. Very provocative point, Robert. And let's get right to it, though. When you think about it, you think what Nazi Germany was. It had all these corporations, but that it kind of controlled as semi-status organizations. One party dictatorship. That's what Nazi. So far, it sounds. I always thought the dividing line between fascism and communism was pretty thin, don't you? Yeah, and uh, I see this as a default option. You know, if all else fails, one of the problems right now is the government's depending on monetary policy alone to fix the economy. But there's a thing called the Mundell Impossible Trinity. Bob Mundell. Let's not get teacher. too complex here. I'm just right. talking simple stuff. Is China turning into where Nazi Germany was in the 30s? If China uses, continues, uses monetary policy, it's going to fail. You're going to have stagflation. You're, you're, going to, you're, you're going to have inflation. You're going to have low growth. It's going to fail. The option will be when the economy fails and the population's unhappy and you get slow growth, what are they going to do? They'll find an alternative. Nationalism, which we see already, and possible militarization. All right. Well, Gordon, they're already militarized, as we know. And I was just over in Australia. A lot of Australians are concerned, even though they rely on China to, to, for, to, to sell all of their bauxite and their iron ore and everything. They're worried about all the offensive weapons that the Chinese are buying, all these little confrontations that are building up between uh, their Navy and Australia's Navy and Korea's Navy and right. Japan's Navy and the U.S. Navy. Yeah, and the thing about it is that the PLA, the Chinese military, have really gotten much more power since 2003, 2004. They've sort of become power brokers as the civilians squabbled among themselves, which means that the flag officers, the generals and the, and the admirals, have now gotten more influence over politics and policy. And, and more than that, over money. Are, isn't, yes. isn't the military involved in a lot of these corporativist enterprises? bigger budgets, and also they control arms merchants. You know, essentially Norinco and some of these other very large state-owned enterprises are controlled by the military. And Huawei, the telecommunications company, Chinese military. Do you know what else they control? Mining. All gold mining is done by the military. The mining itself, you hire out to the military, they do this. That must stuff. be tens They're if not embedded. hundreds of billions of dollars, yeah. right? Well, sure. The alternative in China is economic reform. There's a way out of this conundrum. They shouldn't be using monetary policy. They should be using fiscal policy, low taxes, especially in other words, policy. In Privatize. other words, they should be empowering the people of Absolutely. China. Absolutely. Because what is the per capita income now in China? What's the average per capita income? Maybe three, $4,000 right. a year? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So these people really are at a, a terrible poverty, what we would be considered a poverty level. Level. That's how they're living. It's over sort there. of, it's very mediocre. And the salaries government is not letting them reach their potential. In many cases, salaries haven't increased for 10 years. We've gone through this economic boom and the population hasn't seen it. The consumption share of the economy is half, almost half of what it used to now, be. Now, what the Chinese say, you should be glad they're not making more because if they did make more, we'd have worldwide inflation. If they made more, if people made more, there'd be much less money left over in corporate profits to pay as corruption. They should be paying that as labor costs instead of corruption. So, Gordon, will the Officials. democratizers win out in this battle in China? Because it seems like you have a battle between those who want to democratize the country economically, give the people the power to become consumers in China, give them more money in their pocket, and the, the fascists, if you will, the ones who want to continue yeah. with the militarization of China and keep the people under their foot. In the long, long run, yes, the democratizers will win out because the Chinese people want what we want. But in the short term, and we're talking maybe a couple decades, essentially what you have is the continuation of trends. Xi Jinping, who is slated to become general party secretary at the end of next year, is going to bring in his buddies. They're going to tighten their grip over the economy. So all of these negative trends we've seen over the last three or four years are just going to continue. And that means for a foreseeable future, China is going to move in all the wrong directions. All right. A couple of ways in which they are not like Nazi Germany. Let's just spell it out, Robert. First of all, there is not an Adolf Hitler. There is not a charismatic right. kind right. of dictator, madman dictator. Uh, secondly, there doesn't seem to be a target. Uh, in the case of, of Nazi Germany, it was the Jews. In the case right. of Stalin, it was, it was uh, his vision of the elite, well, uh, the ruling class. There is ethnic nationalism, the Hans and these other nationalities. That's an element. But is, is there somebody waiting in the wings? Are, are there potential dictators well, waiting I, in the wings to, to sort of I, guide I this towards I don't think fascism. so. And the party controls the army, which is also unlike Germany, where they had to make a deal with the army and get rid okay. of the party's army. Had so to there are significant off. differences between China now and Nazi Germany in the 30s. 
Uh, yeah, it's but, not a direct parallel. You know, the leaders of China know they have a time limit. The, the meter's ticking. The taxi meter's ticking. 16 years from now, China, because of demographics, the, the end of, of migration from farm to city, yeah. the population growth will stop. There will be no growth. They'll have zero economic growth. 16 years from now, they know they've got this short window to, to solve these problems. And if they don't do it, they're going to... We've got to leave it at that, Robert Bloom. You, you put off a trip to China in order to be here tonight. We thank you for that. Gordon Chang, always a pleasure to see you. The book is Thank the coming you. collapse.